Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been working on the vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of this book here in my hand the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. As I said, we've been working on the vocabulary words, but in addition to the vocabulary words, if you need, if you find that you need help in the math portion of the exam, you will see that you will find that we have solved all the problem, all the math problem, every single one of them from this book, and you will find the solutions to all of them in our HESI series of day number one through fifty. Just type in HESI math day one, the video will pop right up. In addition to that, if you feel that you need more help, if you need to practice more, you will find that the math on T's is very comparable, very similar to what you will find on the HESIs, and there are 80 videos in that series that you will find helpful. And of course, if you need even more help, there's a third series which is labeled Basic Math. Basic Math, just watch day 1 through 100. You don't have to go all the way up to 200, day 1 through 100 of Basic Math would also be of some interest to you. Let's get going. Today is our lesson number. 22. The very first word we have here, 115, this is not the word, this is not the very first word we want to learn, it's a very simple word obviously, primary, you know what primary means, primary as opposed to what, primary as opposed to secondary. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother writing out the definition of uh, damn silly words like primary and secondary, you know what they mean. My question is, what comes next? If you define something, if you describe something as being primary, that is of the first order, that is the first, the very basic, the very fundamental, the very elementary uh, situation. The one above that is described as secondary, which means of the second level, of the second level, of the second order. What comes after primary and secondary? That's what we want to learn. What comes after primary and secondary is what is described as Let's learn it together. Ter, she, that's the second syllable, she, or re. Tertiary, tertiary, which means of the third order, of the third order, or of the third place, or of the third rank. Something of the third order, something of the third place, something that is in the th that is of the third place, or something that is of the third rank. Tertiary. And it is used in the context sometime of education where people talk about tertiary education. And sometimes you hear uh, these some poor countries uh, are criticized because they spend such inordinate amount of cash, some such inordinate amount of money, money, building these fancy universities, spending money on tertiary education, where more than half the kids in the primary, uh, pr more than half the kids of the age of the primary school are not going to the schools. That's where the money is needed. You need to spend. You need to make sure that uh, all the kids below the age of 16 go to school. Don't worry about spending hundreds of millions of dollars in building a fancy university. You must concentrate on the primary education. You must concentrate on the secondary education, tertiary education. For countries such as these are luxuries. That's how it is used in the context. Tertiary education. That means education of the third order, education of the third level. Not your primary education, which you describe in the U.S. as elementary school. Not your secondary education, which you describe in the U.S. as middle school or high school. Tertiary education is college, college or above college like graduate school, tertiary education. But it, the word itself simply means of the third order. Let's learn two more words, let's learn a couple of more words which are synonym of tertiary, shall we? Tertiary means peripheral, something that is not in the center, something that lies in the outer, outer edge of the thing, something that lies in the outer ring of the city, in the periphery. Let's learn, shall we? The 
word is peripheral per riff that's the second syllable per riff or roll peripheral it's an adjective obviously it's an obviously because it's a synonym and since they're synonym of course if tertiary is an adjective that's an adjective tertiary which is same as peripheral which means not primary or secondary belonging to the third order not not primary or secondary not primary or secondary it means belonging to the outermost part or boundary it is not it is not it is not in the center of the town it is not in the center of the sound it is not a secondary road what we're describing here is the peripheral of the town in the peripheral area of the municipal boundary at the outer edge outer edges of the of the, of the boundary outer edges of the municipal munis municipality peripheral Let's learn one more word, which is similar, which is synonym, and the word here. And again, which word you use when depends on the context. There are nuances here which I'm not going over right now. But uh, peripheral and tertiary, they are related. The word here, next word we want to learn is... Let's learn how to pronounce it. The first syllable, even though it is A, A-U, the first syllable here, as you can see, is Og. Og. Og, zil, og, zil, third syllable is year, and then re, auxiliary. You have to say it together, but the first syllable is, as I said, is og, then zil, you have to say it together, auxiliary. What does it mean if you describe something as auxiliary? Again, this is an adjective. Auxiliary simply means, ex it means exactly what we say here, it's peripheral, it, it is peripheral, it is tertiary, it is not primary, it is not secondary, it is of the third order, it is of the third rank, it is not primary, it is not the main thing. It is not, not primary or main. It simply means it is, it is, It is supplementary. It is supplementary. It was not meant to be the primary thing that we're going to depend on. It is not the first order of defense. It is not the first line of defense. These are auxiliary forces. It is in the military, uh, this term is used. Auxiliary forces are forces that are backup system. Plan B, if you like. These are not the first line of defense. Auxiliary. These are supplementary forces. Auxiliary forces, something that lies in the peripheral. It is not the main thing. Let's carry on. The next word we have is one hundred and eighteen. And the word is Prague. No. Prognosis. It's a noun. What is a prognosis? A prognosis is a forecast, is a prediction. Simple as that. It's a, it's a prediction. It's a forecast. It is something that is anticipated or expected. Something that is anticipated or expected. that is anticipated or SP. 
expected. Anticipated or expected course or action or an outcome. Question is, course, question is, how is this word, how is this word going to crop up in your field, in your in your line of work? If you're preparing for the nursing exam in the medical field, where are you going to come across the word? The where are you going to more likely to hear the word prognosis? Well, the answer is very straightforward. It means prediction or forecast. But in the medical field, when we talk about prognosis, it is used as something that is anticipated or expected. Something that is anticipated as or expected. Or rather, anticipated. A prognosis is it is an anticipated or expected course. or outcome of a disease of a disease or the likelihood of a recovery if you like likelihood of a recovery from a given disease likelihood likelihood of recovery From a disease. So in the medical field, in the, from in the medical field, the word is not used as it is used in the in the in the simple English language, which simply means a prediction or a forecast. But if you ask, if you go approach a doctor and ask him or her for the prognosis, what you're asking her is, how likely is it? that I'm going to recover from a disease. What, is the, what are the chances? What are the odds? How likely is it? What is the likelihood of the recovery, full recovery or partial recovery, from a given disease? What's your prognosis? How do you suppose it's going to pan out? What you're asking the doctor is, when you ask, when you ask her for the prognosis, what you're asking her basically is, how likely is it? How, how, what do you think it's going to, how, how do you think it's going to pan out? How do you suppose it's going to unfold? How is this uh, whole thing going to unfold? What is the anticipated or expected course or outcome of this disease? Do you understand? In other words, what you're asking her is that, is it a good time for me to invest in a nice bucket and begin to carry it with me? Because I don't know when I, when I might need to kick it. That was not very nice, was it? Let's carry on then. Let's carry on, shall we? Some people are just mean and callous, I tell you. 118. This is a very simple word. But as you know by now, no matter how simple the pronunciation might be, we always make a point of writing down the pronunciation phonetically. The word is rational. What does it mean to be rational? It's an adjective. It's an adjective. What does it mean when we describe something as being rational? Well, if something is rational, it is logical. It is logical. It is reasonable. It is something described as rational is, is of sound mind. Something that is sane. A rational decision is one that is based on, that is uh, 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 arrived upon by a sound mind, some of of a of sound by sound mind by a sane person. I don't know why we are making such a big fuss about such a simple word. Simple word. What's the antonym of it? Antonym of rational would be antonym of rational would be irrational, nothing to it. The question is, question is something that is described as rational, if a decision, if a decision or an outcome is described as rational, is based on what? One more time. Rational is an adjective. 
if something is described as being rational, it is based on what? It is based on, but well, we need a noun. What is the noun of rational? Let's not it, shall we? Let's not it, shall we? We need a noun. And the noun of rational, noun of rational is very simple, very straightforward. It is, let's learn, let's learn how to pronounce it. Let's see what sort of changes we will have to make. Let's see what sort of changes we'll have to make in the pronunciation. Rash, O, second syllable is now just O, and then last syllable is nail. Something that is rational is so called because it is based on some rationale. It is based on some rationale, which is the noun, which is the noun, which simply means logic. It is based on some logic. It is based on. It is. It has some basis. It has some underlying. It has some underlying reason behind it. Some fundamental reason behind it. It is the thinking process. Thinking process. It is the thinking process that lies behind something that is described as being rational. A rational action is based on some rational. Rational simply means, rational simply means, simply means the thinking process, the logic, the basis, the underlying thought process that lies behind something. Very often we turn on TV on and you, you, hear, you hear about these morons who are on the highway going at full speed at six in the 60 miles zone they're going 70 80 90 miles an hour and then they're finally pulled over and it, uh, it transpires that they have no license that their license was revoked the license was suspended or their uh, uh, that's typically the case and the very first thing that kind of crosses my mind is what was their rationale obviously these people are not very rational obviously because if my if I was driving, forget about the suspended license. Even if my re my registration is expired by one day, I would be extra careful. I will be more cautious. I will I'll make a point of uh, observing all the traffic laws. And there they are. That's why they are described as morons. Because one wonders, what is their rationale? What is their logic? What was their rationale behind doing this thing? If somebody does something that is insane. You ask them, what was your rationale? What was your logic behind it? What was your thinking process? What was the underlying, what was the underlying reasoning behind it? What was your rationale? Rationale? Rational. If something is rational, it is based on some rationale. Let's carry on then. The next word we have is, the next word we have is, just give me one brief second. Yes, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that a second is a second. There is no such thing as a brief second. But there you have it. The next word we have is 121. And the word is recur. Very simple pronunciation, obviously. What does it mean to recur? Recur exactly means what it says here. Re is the prefix, which means again. And recur means to happen again. To occur again, to occur. That's where occurrence has this same root. To occur again, to happen again, or it means to repeat, to repeat, or or something that something that happens, something that happens, something that happens. Repeatedly, something that happens repeatedly, something that repeats over and over again is said to be reoccurring. Recurring, rather. Uh, recurring is the word, sorry. Recurring, uh, it happens repeatedly. What's the noun of it? The noun of recur is. Thus, where we are learning these words. 
That's we are learning this word so that we don't end up making a boo-boo like I just did. Recurrence is the noun. Recur, recurrence. The adjective would be something that recurs, that happens over and over again, is said to be, is said to be, it has two R's in it, re cur recurrent. Recurrent means, simply means something that happens over and over again, something that happens repeatedly, something that ha repeats itself. Recur, recurrence, recurrent, recurrence, recurrent. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.